Good morning. It's good to be, oh, there we go. Hello. It's good to be with you uh, this morning as we worship the risen Lord. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday before the beginning of Advent season. And so we're going to celebrate Christ the King today. I do have a, a, just an announcement I'd like to go ahead and make uh, so that um, it won't be a, a shock to you as we get into the worship and then in the prayers you go, oh my, what's that about? Uh, Joy and Jan were involved in a, an automobile accident on Friday. They're fine. Their car has taken some significant damage, but they're all right. However, uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday evening, uh, early evening, uh, Jan, uh, Joy noticed some blood where it shouldn't be. And so she went to the emergency room and got checked out, and I'm glad they were thorough. They, took, they gave her a CAT scan, and everything appears to be good. It appears that the bleeding was caused because she's on blood thinner. But we're going to pray for Joy and Jan today, and, I, and that accident and uh, the others that were involved in it, they were hit in the rear. And um, just want to give you a heads up on that, but they are all right. And I'll be glad to answer any questions about uh, that after the the service. But in any event, let us stand as we begin our opening hymn, uh, 483 of the hymnal, the first and last verse. worship continues on page 123 of your Book of Common Prayer. The opening acclamation, page 123. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Please join with me in the collect for purity on the next page. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our lesson. Our lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 17 through 28. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father, after de- the kingdom of God, to the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it's plain that he is accepted who puts all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you would please stand for our gospel reading. Our gospel is from St. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 uh, through 46. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate one people from another, as a shepherd shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did you see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And, then, and when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire pre- prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was thirsty and you gave me no food. I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. 
and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please join with me in prayer. Lord Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, we celebrate your redemptive work for the salvation of the world, for your offer of grace and kindness and the elimination of sin and the victory over death and eternal life in the kingdom of the Father. Lord, engraft in our hearts love and compassion for the lost, for those who do not know you. And also, in Lord, engraft in our hearts a compassion for those who suffer in this world, who are hungry and have no food, who are thirsting for water and have no clean water, who are lonely and alone and do not have visitors, but also nurture our starving and deprived souls with the Holy Spirit. Feed us with that food that never perishes, with that drink that fills and we are forever satisfied. And strengthen our walk and witness now and always. In Christ's most precious name, amen. Please be seated. Well, today, of course, is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday before we move into the Advent season. So next week, uh, we will have celebrated Thanksgiving at our homes and with family or at home uh, safely and secure, I pray. And then we will gather next week for the first Sunday of the Advent season, that season of preparation for the coming of Christ. And so the, the, the church has ordered the calendar in such a way that right before we move into the Advent season, which culminates, of course, in the celebration of the birth of Jesus, the babe lying in a manger, we are reminded right up front that this is no average child, this is no average baby, this is not just a human story, but this is the story of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is the one that helps put things in perspective as we live into what we call the liturgical calendar year, the life cycle of the church. And so before we start thinking of away in a manger, before we start thinking of the crash, let us remember that this baby, this God become flesh, came with a singular and sole purpose to die on the cross for your sins and for my sins. He came to give us everlasting life. And that is a precious price that he paid that you and I cannot pay. We can try. We can do all types of things that we want to do. Uh, but we won't succeed in the only thing that God can succeed in. You see, you and I need this King of Kings and Lords of Lords because we are sinners. As we're reminded in the, the Scripture this morning, the, through Adam and his sin, Adam and Eve, the original sin, all of us are tainted. But we're also tainted by our own choices our own rebelliousness, our own selfishness, our own desire to get our way. And you and I need a Savior. If you have any doubts about that, come and speak to me after the service. But don't hold it against some who want to speak with me after the service on a whole separate matter, okay? Um, the second thing is if we understand that we need the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, we also need to understand that it is He who is seeking us. There is a poem that was uh, it's 182 lines. It was published in 1893, and it was published by a fellow named Francis Thompson. He died at the age of 47. He had been tormented, a tormented soul. He had gotten addicted uh, to 
uh, whatever it was people got addicted to back then, opium, I believe. And he died because he was living on the streets and he contracted tuberculosis. And he died on November 13th, 1907. But before his death, he was a poet. I think of Edgar Allan Poe when I think of this fellow. And he wrote a poem called The Hound of Heaven. Are you familiar with it? I suspect you are. It's an old poem, obviously, and it's one that's been around, and I'm going to recite just a couple of lines from it. It's, uh, again, 182 lines, but I'm not going to recite all of it. Here's how it begins, the first three lines. I fled from him down the night and down the days. I fled from him down the arches of the years. I fled from him down the labyrinthine ways. Trying to flee God, trying to live a life independent of God's plan, independent of the king. And now the poem at the end, I want to read from the very end of the poem where it's talking about God who like a hound chases a hare. God chases after the souls of each human being. And so from those strong feet that followed, followed after but an un unhurrying chase, deliberate speed, majestic intimacy. Rise, clasp my hand and come, shade of his hand outstretched. I am he who thou seeketh. Thou dra dravest me from thee. Who dravest me? I had to look up the word dravest. <laughs> it's uh, you may run from God, but he is running after you. You see, happiness is in the seeking and being sought by God. Misery is when we're running away from God. We need to understand that you and I are prodigal sons and daughters, and we are being called, and we are being chased by God because He wants us to come to the wedding feast. And so, my friends, on this day of celebrating Christ the King, we need Him as our King, as our Lord. We need Him as our Savior. And it isn't wonderful that you and I don't have to chase after Him. We don't have to do things to earn His love, to seek His attention. We already have God's love. We already have the attention of the Anointed One. And on this day, before we move into the Advent season, remember, Jesus loves you. And He died so that you can have victory over death. You can have victory over damnation through Christ. Because He is called to be your Lord and my Lord, our King and our Savior. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would please stand, let us continue with the Nicene Creed. It's found on page 127 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you would please kneel as you are able, we continue on the next page with the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our archbishop, and Mark, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, I invite your own prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings, either audibly or silently from your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full respect that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. I invite you now to stand as we pass the peace from where we're standing. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. God's peace, everyone. You may be seated. I just want to share another announcement with you. There's a, 
uh, a board uh, at the entrance of the church um, that uh, Tina Rhodes has prepared as our joint uh, missionary work with Holy Comforter, uh, Mission of Hope. It's where we um, are in working with our sister parish in supporting various missionaries. And some of those you know, um, uh, Father Imad uh, from Egypt uh, and, uh, and others. And so uh, during this Advent season, as we're moving into Advent, there are little envelopes there where you can put a check or cash and simply drop in the offering plate all during the Advent season. And we will collect those, and those 100% of everything collected will go straight to the support of the missionaries. And so this is a way of joining with the universal church uh, worldwide uh, because we're supporting missionaries all around, locally and around the world, and also is us working with a fellow sister church. Again, the community, the body of Christ, working together to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And, of course, I invite you to think of the Advent season as an opportunity to um, put some money aside uh, for charity, for good works, uh, to support, again, missions or other activities with the food bank and so forth. There are all types of needs. There are all types of things. And all of that money, you should just go 100% to those organizations to help uh, the needy in our community, and to help with the proclamation. Because again, we hear in the gospel reading today, thirsty, hungry, naked, in prison. If you think about that, it answers the call of our neighbor. Everyone is our neighbor. And we cannot go about life without caring and having compassion because that's the way that Jesus entered this world, in compassion. And so I invite you to think uh, compassionately about what you can do physically, what you can do financially uh, to support the proclamation of the gospel, but also the gospel proclaimed through providing food or shelter and the various needs that are increasing, especially because of the pandemic. Our offertory sentence comes from Matthew 25, verse 40. And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did for the least of these, my brothers, you did to me. Our offering hymn, offertory hymn, is hymn 495. <clears throat> continue, I invite you to stand, page 132 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, 
always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Please join me in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please join with me, those who would like, for the prayer of spiritual communion. It is found on page 677. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy, Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all the faithful people gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
friends, I invite you to continue on page 137 with the post-communion prayer and join with me. Page 137. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. If you'd like to join with the prayer for union with Christ, it's found on page 674. 674. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Before I give you the dismissal, of course, this Thursday is Thanksgiving, and I would just invite you um, to think about all the things that you are thankful for. And in a pandemic where so many things are thrown up in the air and are very, um, very different than we could have ever ha have imagined, I think it's especially helpful to be thankful, to find those things that we are thankful, truly thankful for. And so Thanksgiving is our American holiday, but you know every day is a day in which we can wake up in the morning and be thankful for another day, another opportunity to, to live into the kingdom that Jesus died for. And so I want to share with you my great uh, thanks for the privilege of being your priest and your pastor here. And it is a privilege uh, for me and for my family and so we love you, and I give thanks every day and pray for you all every day. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is hymn 494.